Welcome everyone to another episode of the Power of Being You podcast. My name is Sarah Grandinetti, your host, and today I am joined by one of my most favorite people in the whole world. Um, my brother, Dr. Dane here, he is also the co-creator of Access Consciousness. Do you want to say hi first before I read your, Hello. do this whole, that whole bio bit? Hello. <laughs> yeah. so. You can tell I wanted to. That is how closely a brother and sister can be linked, which is now a little scary and weird now that I said it that way, but okay. That's the mind wander. It's fine. Okay. So the bio is Dr. Dean here is an international author and speaker renowned for his joyful approach to life and his provocative perspective is perspectives on consciousness and creation as a co-creator of Ac- Sarah's bigger brother. And he's Sarah's bigger brother. I like that. He you interrupts speaker. the podcast yeah. inappropriately as he should. Yes. And as he is invited, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> As a co- co-creator of Access Consciousness, here invites, here would be you. Here. Dr. Right, yeah. Right here. <laughs> he invites people from every culture, country, age, and social strata of society to embrace their greatness. Originally trained, trained as a, changed as a chiropractor, but also trained, here offers a unique and thought-provoking approach to healing, which encourages people to tap into and recognize their own abilities and knowing. He is the author of nine books, including the international bestseller, Being You Changing the World. He has appeared as a guest on hundreds of nationally syndicated radio and TV shows, including lots of big names. Do you want me to read them? No. Sure. No. God, okay. No. Okay. <laughs> including who cares? Like, what are you doing today? I don't care what TV shows you've been on. I like Sorry. it. That's okay. Yeah. No like, problem. what are you being today is the question, you know, because every day is a new day. And if we're not creating us today, if we're looking back at what we did in the past as though that has more value than what we can create as our future, we are limiting ourselves dynamically. And we are off and running because so I thank you for that. Cause there are so many of us who are out there trying to fix our past in order to create a future. Exactly. And, and, I, and get I a, use, sorry, okay, go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I used to be one of them. I totally understand. Yeah. I thought I had to change all of my problems before I could have any possibilities. Yeah. And I found that is a lie. And, and here's the weird part is in your life right now, if you would just look and go, okay, what are the possibilities I would like? And, and I know that can sound kind of cheesy. Like what are the possibilities as though they're a thing out there? They're not even out there yet. That's why we call them possibilities. But like what, you know, and I ask people to just get the sense of if you had a magic wand and could have anything as your life in the next five years, what would it be? And I tell them, get the sense of it, not get, oh, I have a hundred million dollars because everybody who says I want a hundred million dollars or a million or 10 million or whatever it is. Number one, they don't believe they can have it. Number two, they're using it as a solution to their, what they consider their current problem. And that's not a creative space. That is a that is at best a, a linear, really limited space from which to function. But if you get the sense of the way it would be to have total ease with money, no matter how much you have, total ease paying for everything, total ease with the money that comes in and the money that goes out and not resist it going out and not resist it coming in, that's a different space. And that is interesting because That is something that we all can sense. We can all get the sense of it. And some people are more kinesthetic. Some people are more uh, uh, visual. Some people are more auditory. Some people are more feeling oriented. We're all different. And most of us have a combination of those things. But if we can sense that in our own way, like what would it be like? And, And all we have to do is get it for literally a split second, just a moment, a flash of what that could be like. Once we get that flash, and it could stay with us a lot longer, I'm just letting people know, you don't have to sit there and try to like nail it down to have it. But once we get that flash, we now have an awareness of an energy that we can ask for. And then anything that feels like that energy, do it because that's the universe saying, hey, dum-dum, over here, (laughs) come this way, you stupid idiot. And I kind of, in this moment, I'm hoping that we put this on video because my white peacock Zazzle is- I I just thought the same thing. (laughs) He's like, yeah, be you, dum-dum. Show your peacock feathers. Let your tail feathers fly. Show everybody. 
Uh, and I love how it looks like he's like walking over your shoulder in this view. So. Yeah, totally. It's yeah. like, I'm here. <laughs> um, Dane, um, thank you for, for that. And it's so funny because I being one of those people that was like, but the problems are so real, Dane, how can I get a sense of the possibilities? Um, <clears throat> and now to, to talk to people who are really truly making the problems so real. And I know I, I still do it in many areas, but, um, you, you speaking to that of like, just getting the energy, not like, it's not like creating a 10 year plan. It's not, you know, going back over, you know, your past and trying to figure that all out and what went wrong so that you can finally get it right. Um, so much of, of what access invites us to is to look at the energy of the life you'd like to have and then choose from that energy, like you said, and follow it. Um, what I want to bring up though, is when I was reading your bio uh, today and it says like your joyful approach. I'd love to talk about that because, um, like before we got on, we were talking about going through a little bit of like your story and where you're at right now and what, what was, and what could have been, had you not found these tools and started to create your life differently. And what I remember is I have a, I have a very strong memory of your joy of like you putting on, on like different shows or being the family comedian and those kind of things. And, um, how that was like diminished or asked to not be shared or whatever that is yeah, can you don't, speak don't a little bit so much that? was basically yeah. the message from everyone in our family yeah and and that's the thing is like here i am 22 years later finally saying fuck you to the world in the sense of <laughs> i think that's funny i'm you know i'm a lover not a fighter but i think so i think it's funny to say that but yeah. <clears throat> in the sense of like I'm living from the joy of it. Like, and I, I have, it, it's funny because I have a lot. And yet for so long, I was still making the solving of the problems and necessity so I could have the joy if everything was perfect. Yeah. Like I could be the full expression of my joy if everything was perfect, everything's going well, you know, all my ducks are in a row. And now I'm like, you know what? I don't care where you are, ducks. I don't care where you are, peacock. Like, I'm having the joy. I'm being the joy. Just because I'd like to. So there you go. And that's why I say, you know, fuck you world. Because the world is like, you can't unless it's perfect. Unless everything is right. And I'm like, yeah, I'm done listening to you. You can talk all you want. Nobody is listening anymore. Yeah, even young, like I watch, so I have, um, two young girls that have an older brother, my oldest son and, um, your nephew, um, and he goes away and he goes to college and then he comes back and there's this joy that when he walks in the, in the house, everybody lights up and the girls run to him. And I remember so vividly, like being happier when you're around, even when we were little and, um, and so what, I guess what I, what I wanted to explore a little bit was like, even with that ask to, for you to turn it down, um, and what the world was telling you, um, what really started to get you to know that something else was possible maybe is the question. Um, and I know you found bars and all of that, but I just, I, I guess I'm like, there's a, there's a, a thread of something of, of it was always there. Yeah. That. And I, I think that is vital to get, which is why we're doing a podcast about being you. Yeah. And, you know, because when we're truly being us, there is a level of peace. There's a level of ease. And there's an underlying current of joy that has a peace to it that is unfathomable. And it really, it truly is unfathomable. It's unfathomable. It's too good to be true but it's still true. And, and that I think is one of the things that, that makes people avoid it because it is unfathomable in most people's worlds to live like that. And we have this idea that if you're going to be successful, you're going to have to sell your soul and work hard doing something you don't like and have people that don't like you and deal with all the, all these people judging you and all this. And it's like, well, when you're being you, it, your whole life takes on a different flavor. And so, you know, for me, I went from, you know, being that person who really loved making people happy. And, and finally, when I got to 30 years old and was with my uh, person who later became my fiance, 
I finally was like, I'm a total failure. I can't even make her happy. And then I looked at my practice. I was opening my, I opened my second chiropractic practice in Santa Barbara. And I was looking, I'm like, wow, I can't seem to make these people happy in my practice either. I'm not creating the level of change I would like to. And that really, for me, was one of the things that got me to the point where I was ready to end my life. Because I was like, okay, if I can't make this person happy, and it was especially about her, I never asked, does she actually want to be happy? Does she have any capacity to be happy? You know, I thought it was all me. It was all my fault that she wasn't able to be happy. And that was one of the things that finally made me just give up hope in my life. That and trying all kinds of things to change stuff, being willing to do the work and having it not change for longer than a day or two. And so when you ask what, what was it or, or was there something that let me know that things could be so different, it literally was this bar session that I had, the first bar session I ever had 22 years ago where I went in depressed and suicidal and ready to end my life and looking forward to it, by the way, bye-bye. And it changed everything. It was a space. It gave me access to space. And I had a sense, and I will never forget those early weeks and months and I guess years where it was so enthusing to me, I would, so I had this first bar session, I went in and my world was just contracted, like so much. And I hated everything that I had anything to do with. And somebody who is at that place can probably dynamically relate to that. And I hope you're not at that place. Um, but I had that bar session and went from totally contracted to this sense of space and gratitude for being alive. And I knew that that demonic gorilla that had been on my back for so many years, his, his paws were dislodging. And I was like, oh my God, if it feels this way to be alive, I'm in. And that quite literally is why we're here. It's why we have a Being You podcast. You know, it's like, it's like, and so that was such a dynamic awareness that things could miraculously change instantaneously, that that's what I started seeking in everything. That's what I was actually looking for was miraculous, instantaneous, dynamic change. And what's funny is I see that all the time in the people that come to access and, you know, that use these tools. And so that was one element. And then what would happen is Shannon, who ran my bars, she would give me one tool to use each week until I saw her next week to get my bars run. And the first tool was, who does this belong to? Well, a few days after getting my bars run, and I, I, I wish I could somehow impart to everybody listening the, the sense of, <laughs> the sense of, of just gloriousness of being alive as it was for me after my first bar session, I was just like, I looked at everything through these childlike eyes of wonder. And I just saw everything so differently. It was just, oh my goodness, it was so beautiful to be alive. Whereas before it was so terrible to be alive. I remember driving to my clinic, my, well, okay, I'd love to say clinic. <laughs> it was the tiniest little friggin' office, you know, with two tables in it. And um, in the Granada building in Santa Barbara, but I remember driving there looking left and right before getting the bars and thinking, wow, why is it everybody else seems happy? And I, am I the only one who's not happy here? And that was my point of view. I must be the only one. Well, after bars, I was like, wow, it is so glorious to be alive. I'm not even comparing myself to other people right now. And this is something that is amazing to me to not do. And so about three days after, um, I woke up and it felt like all of that crap was back. And I was like, oh no, this too? Shit, this one, I really thought I knew it was going to work, right? And I was so bummed. And um, the tool that Shannon gave me was, who does this belong to? And she wrote it down on a little yellow post-it note. And I didn't even realize it, but when I um, emptied my pockets that night after the bar session, just in a wonderful days of awesomeness, 
I propped that little, who does this belong to thing right by the clock. And my daily routine at that point in my life before bars for months before bars was to lay in bed and wallow in this self-pity and depression and darkness until I had to get up and go to work and try to be a doctor and heal people and make them happy. And uh, so here I was and here it was again. And I was like, fuck, man, I'm done. And I look over at the clock to see how much longer I can wallow in self-pity. And I read these words on this little yellow sticky note that says, who does this belong to? And I just read it without even saying it out loud. And it all went away. And I was like, I literally was looking around the room going, what just happened? And then I remember Shannon said, hey, 98% of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions aren't yours. 98% of the crap that goes through your head and through your body is not yours. It's what you're aware of in the world. You just think it's yours because you perceive it so intensely and you think you're feeling it rather than perceiving it. And I was like, holy shit. And what was so awesome was like right after this, man, I was even more on fire. I was like, oh my God, I confronted my biggest demon staring me right in the face, like right there. And I went, fuck you. Goodbye, <laughs> demon. Dane's take it over. You know, it was so cool. It was so freaking awesome. And so there was this enthusiasm for my life. And what would happen is every time Shannon would run my bars, it's like the space I had, I went from contraction to space, let's say like the size of a big, I don't know, big basketball. And she would run my bars and then the space would increase and it would stay. Like it, I just had this space. But then once again, she would give me a tool to use. Like sometimes it was a question, what else is possible? Sometimes it was like an entity clearing or something. And every time the universe wanted to cave that space in, I say the universe wanted to, Every time I would go to cave that space in, I would use this tool and the space would expand to where it was. And then sometimes I'd use the tool and it would hit on something different and the space would expand even more. And this was my, and, and here I am, I'm the only one having this experience, right? I can't tell my future ex-fiance. I can't tell, <laughs> can't tell anybody. Nobody gets it. You know, I tried, I talked to a friend of mine and they're like, oh, that's great. And I'm like, oh man, they don't get it at all. They, and all I wanted to do was I wanted to run around the world, like with this big bag of whatever I discovered and like feed everybody, you know, like here, check this out. This is the best thing you know, really is possible. What you know is possible. And nobody gave a shit. And um, within a few months, I met Gary because he came into my office and asked for a session and Gary, the founder of Access. And the moment I saw him, man, he became my best friend. I was just, mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I just wanna, I, I had this, I had this thought. I'm like, I just wanna jump into his arms and run off into the sunset, you know? And it, 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 it's funny to say about a man because it wasn't a romantic thing. It was an acknowledgement of being thing. that was so amazing. And I was like, wow. And now I also have a person I could talk to him about it. And not only that, I could talk to him about it, but also he would expand upon it. He would ask me questions and all these places I was sticking myself started dissolving. And I was still doing these sessions with Shannon once a week. And then I started working on Gary and his family and we started talking. And I was like, man, all my frigging Christmases have come at once. This is like the greatest thing ever because every day things got greater. And I know not everybody has a Dane and a Gary and a Shannon, okay? But what I do know also is using these tools, every day can become greater. Every single day. Because for us, as the people we are, man, if we're not getting greater every single day, we are stagnating and dying. We are like a shark. We got to keep moving, period. Because that is how we thrive. <laughs> I have so many things I want to say. The one that's popping the loudest is um, <laughs> at the top, you said, you know, um, basically like following the energy, get the sense of something and then follow that energy. And what you just showed me in that story is that you had this thing and you're like, I just want to share it with the world. <laughs> I just want to tell everybody about it. <laughs> and then Gary walks in and you want to jump into his arm and run out the sunset. And then here you are living the unfathomable because 
being like so many people I see, um, meet you and, and it's really easy to assume you're a very handsome man. You know, you, you dress nice. You, you have a great personality. Yeah, you're quite funny. You hey, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's so easy to say, well, of course he's always had that easy, you know, and then oh. to, you know, read, um, read your story. People be, you know, get are surprised, but then to look at even that, that, that very slight, like you said, just have it for a nanosecond, have it for a nanosecond of an ask and then follow the energy and, and really looking at what you're creating and what you're creating with the bars and with access into future. What was it like? I mean, maybe I've never asked you this. What was it like when Gary was like, Hey, you want to own half of access? <laughs> like you want to oh, come yeah. on? We might, maybe we can explore that because I can't even imagine being where you were finding these tools. And I, I got to be there and, and see your life transform, which is a huge gift. And also watching you take it from like, just outside of, okay, I'm, I'm good now. Or I, I am like, I think we were talking about this the other day is like being mm. just, just better than, than comfortable, right? Like you're yeah. uncomfortable now I'm not comfortable, so I'm fine. And, but you keep going. So can you, you talk about maybe the shark stuff, the, the shark stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Shark Week on the Being You podcast. <laughs> oh my god, we should title the episode that we will not know what the fuck and have totally. to have to click. So yeah, so um, what has it been like? Because you have the Everything Is Possible class coming up this weekend. You're doing a global bars class that seems to be the the biggest bars class ever, and that's all happening this week. And to talk about this experience right now, I mean, what a gift! Thank you to have you living, literally living the, the unfathomable, which is actually clearly fathomable. That it's clearly fathomable. It's, it's so, so many things, but it's like, see, we all have, we all have a knowing of how to get where we'd really like to go. That requires us though, if we're going to follow that inner knowing we're going to have to give up the judgment system that we think has gotten us. Well, it has gotten us where we are, but that we think has been the necessity in getting to where we would like to go. And so it's, it's like, truly, everything is changeable. Everything is possible. And, but here's the thing, it may not change tomorrow, you know, and this is where we stick ourselves because we assume that it must change today, otherwise I'm doing it wrong. No, get the nanosecond of the ask, or if it stays around longer, that's great too. <clears throat> but don't try to figure out how it's going to show up. Don't put you in the way of the universe. Let the universe contribute to you. Ask and you shall receive is one of the truths that actually exists in the world. They just put it in the middle of the Bible so nobody would believe it or receive it or be able to find it in that big fucking book. So... Here's what we've got to do is start getting the sense of what we would like. And we, and, <clears throat> and so for me in having this enthusiasm in this, it was just like, like, I felt like I was finally given permission to be what I always was that I was never allowed to be by myself and other people. And so, you know, and I know now I'm the only one who cannot let me be myself, but I didn't know that then I thought other people had, had the key. You know, I thought they had the the permission slip that I required that they would never give me because I was never perfect enough. And I also assumed, and I think a lot of other people do, that if I could just be more perfect, then everything would work out right. And I realized that that is one of the biggest ways we shoot ourselves in the foot because there are lots of people who are too dumb to know they should be perfect who are creating awesome lives, you know? And I'm like, wait, don't you know? Like, how can you just be happy? Don't you realize that you're not perfect enough? Like and there's problems and stuff that you and they're like yeah yeah, yeah i'm gonna go crazy i'm like ah oh, fuckers you know and so when gary um so gary gave me half of the business uh i don't know probably 14 or 15 years in but could you imagine i don't know there's just there's so much there's so much magic that we created together and it was primarily me and Gary and also Simone and but it was like man when we when we started it was it it had the sense of all of the forces that want to keep the world down were against us 
personally. I mean, the stuff we had to deal with, the stuff we had to deal with energetically, it was just like, but yet we just kept going. We kept being the magic. We kept course adjusting all the time, you know, and, and we're like the nimble ninjas of consciousness. And so <clears throat> what that created was the willingness to change anything on a dime. And also the willingness to know that no matter what looks like the problem you can't solve, there is always a way to change it. <clears throat> and then that created the place where rather than having my entire perspective of reality be about looking at the problems and what has to be solved, is somewhere it, it, it and continuously has and continues to today shifted to, wow, what are the possibilities? If I could choose anything, what would it be? And <clears throat> I had a conversation with you and our creative gaggle the other day. And, and one of the things I recognized was that for the last couple months, I've kind of been, rather than enthusiastically creating, I've kind of been like, hey, you know, with a lot of this stuff, we're changing the world, you know, it's good. Let me just sort of relax a little. And then I'm like, that's not me. I mean, I love relaxing. Don't get me wrong. And almost all of this has come from relaxation. And so it's like, and when I'm not relaxed, I know I'm not actually being me. And so it's this interesting thing where for me, I'm always like more, faster, greater, better, more, faster, greater, better, more, faster, greater, better, while being totally relaxed, which is like, that's unfathomable and too good to be true. And it doesn't exist. I'm like, it is perhaps unfathomable. It is too good to be true, but it is still true. And it definitely exists. And that's, and this is the whole thing about anything with being is there are these apparent dichotomies that are actually not dichotomies. It's these things that appear to be two separate sides of something that when you don't require them to be separate, meld together into something far more beautiful. And that is part, just part of our capacity. But it only occurs when we get over avoiding what we've been avoiding, avoiding what we've been, uh, avoiding looking at things, avoiding um, people, avoiding their points of view, avoiding judgment, avoiding being made wrong, of, avoiding how great we are, avoiding the gift of how different we are. You know, the, it only occurs when we're willing to stop believing that avoidance is a necessary quality for survival. And here's the thing, avoidance does create survival, but it will never create thrival. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, um, you just did a no more fucks class and um, the difference between when we go to, you know, no more fucks and avoidance, because I've seen it even in myself going, you know what, I'm not, fuck it. Like, I can't change it. Like right now, this doesn't want to change. This is just what it is. And I'm going to be over here doing my thing. But, but what I see is that there's this like energy of avoidance through the no more fucks. So can, can you pull those apart a little bit for me? Yeah. Or does so, it, is it one of those that you let them melt together? I don't know. <laughs> well, no, this one requires a little bit okay. more clarity, but okay. energetically when, okay. So when you have no more fucks to give, it's like, you can't be bothered to be drawn into something limited or um, less than you basically. Okay. And, and nothing, uh, nothing is relevant that is not about creating more. And so when you're being that, if you'll notice the energy of, okay, I see you and okay, fine. Like I have no more fucks to give about what you're choosing. Like it's fine. Choose what you're going to choose. Your, your energy is present. And if anything, sort of forward moving. When you're doing the, well, I just can't be bothered and deal with that. What you're doing is you're pulling your energy back to disengage with the situation. When you're having no more fucks, you're totally present with the situation. You're just choosing not to be limited or um, strung around somebody's insanity with it. And so that creates a space where, and, and that's not to say, see, when you have no more fucks to give, that doesn't mean that you don't um, that you don't address things that need to be addressed and changed. It means you don't do it from the drama and the 
uh, getting your pennies in a tough in order to, you know, try to accomplish something different. Yeah, I and just so, thought we're making it real. Yeah, like, that exactly that. Yeah, like what giving a fuck might be equal to making it more real. Yeah, that. And that's what we do. And we've got to realize we are the ones who hold the key to reality. It's only if we make something real that it will show up as real for us which I'm still grokking. I mean, that's like, what? Like one sentence and you go, you know, because if we don't make it real, then it has no relevance to us. It, and it, none of what goes on that we make real and relevant has to be real and relevant. We make it that way. Well, we've learned from some wonderful people, like everybody to make it that way. <laughs> so we keep doing that rather than realizing what choice do I have that nobody else does. and. You know, I, I understand how it can look from the outside where somebody sees me 22 years later, who's like, yeah, you've always had more choices. You just have it easy. I'm like, dude, uh-uh. I worked and clawed for every friggin' possibility I now call mine. I did the work and still continue to. But also, it's so much fun. Why would you not do the work? It's so much more fun, like getting over your fixed point of view like with a person, for example. And totally adoring them again, rather than being like, oh, yeah, you did this and I'm still making you wrong for it. Like I was made wrong my whole life. So I'm going to do the same thing to you because I loved it when it happened. So <laughs> I'm going to be just as much of an asshole to you to prove that I am right and they are right and you are wrong. <laughs> Dude, that shit sucks. Why are we so stupid? It feels much better to be close with people and even if they're not willing to have the closeness, if we're willing to, we have closeness with us and closeness with them is not relevant any longer because we have us. You know, so I say, it's like, I've done the work. I will continue to do the work. And the work is so much more fun than not doing it. And it's way more like play most of the time. Yeah. One of the greatest gifts like to get to create with you is to, to be there front row watching you do the work. You know, I think it's really easy. Um, <clears throat> I won't mention names, but there are other, you know, inspirational speaker people, if you will, out there um, that are one way, you know, when they're, when they're doing like on stage or giving a speech or doing something that inspires people, but then you find out so much that behind the scenes, that's not actually what's going on. And um, I, I will never forget being on safari with you in Africa. And you, and I've told this story. I don't know if I told this here, but you had headphones in and I was Dane, Dane, like, look at the zebra or whatever. And you weren't responding. And, and so I was like, of course, wrong, because you don't want to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, I was like, oh. and then um, you turned your head and I saw you had headphones in. And at first I was like, how did he get service all the way out here? That's magical. <laughs> um, come to find out you were listening to clearings while even on Safari in Africa, because of what had just um, like broken open an access and that you were really in it and being with it and being so present with it. And that changed something for me to like, like when you say like claw for every, every possibility that you have now as your reality um, is that you're doing the work. So thank you for doing the work. Um, thank you. One and thank you for the invitation for the rest of us to um do the work as well. Well, yeah, um, and also to allow it to allow it to be easy. That's one of the yeah. things I love about access is change is for the most part, not always, but for the most part, friggin' easy. You know, the reward, the reward ratio to the the doing it is so great. It's like why you'd be an idiot not to you know but that's yeah. that sounds mean i don't mean it in a mean way i just mean like like it, yeah it 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 creates more per moment of of using it than anything else i've ever seen so true i had someone the other day want me like want me to go into a deeper facilitation with them and i didn't really have a lot of time i was like well, i said what if you just tried changing your point of view about it <laughs> They were like, okay, thank you. And that was it. Like, it was just like, because the simplest thing and in that in my interesting point of view and access is your point of view creates your reality. So if you change your point of view, you change your reality. And um, that is so simple and so easy. And also how we work so hard to make it so hard. So yeah, it's, we're cute. <laughs> Believing that only if it's hard, does it have value? Yeah. Mm. 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 Oh, thank you, mommy and daddy. <laughs> 
Oh, thanks, thanks so much. For all the gifts. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to explore, you, you've said enthusiasm a few times, um, and in talking about everything being possible, can, can we dive in a little bit about like using enthusiasm as like a fuel, um, oh, and how, yeah. how, like you saying the first time saying, if I'm not excited about it, it probably won't get created. I don't know exactly your words, but being creating with you. And if like, we all know that if Dean's not excited, it's not going to happen, but not from like a resistance, but from like really creating on the, um, the creative edge of enthusiasm and your enthusiasm and knowing that that, that creates magic in everything that, um, you create. So can you talk a little bit about that? Cause I, one of the things that you gifted me this week was unhiding my enthusiasm. Um, yeah. And how wrong that felt to be sitting there going, Oh, I can't, I can't show you that. That is not, that is not okay. So can yeah. you, can you talk a little bit about that? And I've, I've seen so many people do that recently too. And other things. So, yes. Well, the thing is, um, the enthusiasm I'm talking about is, see people have you know how people are like oh I'm so intense like I I do I jump out of planes I you know like yeah. and by the way I love jumping out of planes so yeah but that for me see for me that elevates the enthusiasm for other people that's the intensity they need to prove something about themselves either prove that they're alive prove they're not dead prove that they're really cool. They'll do, they'll do death defying stunts. I'm like, I'm not defying death. There's no way in hell I'm going to die today while fucking jumping out of a plane. That sorry. That's not my thing, you know? So for me, it's like this enthusiasm and um, <clears throat> like, I just started getting into guns again. And, you know, as you know, I used to be into guns when I was a kid, you know, hunting and that sort of stuff and loved it. And I also used to be into scuba diving. So I just got into scuba diving again too. And these are some sources for enthusiasm. But if you can get the way in which I'm talking about it, like, like get the energy of this thing of jumping into the water and then going under and breathing. I mean, dude, like, dude, it's, I did it in my pool for an hour the other day. I just got certified and I went in the pool because I wanted to in, just enjoy it, you know? Just so weird scuba diving with a full tank and wetsuit and everything in your pool. And I was like, I was like, man, the neighbors are going to love this one, you know? And, and I was just, it's just so wonderful. But that for me is a creative energy. Actually, it's a creative energy for all of us. And it's one of the things that I'm, I'm so glad you allowed to come up in your world <clears throat> this last week, because it makes every creation greater. And see, there's, there's many ways to create. OK, there's not just one way to create. There are many ways, but some of them have a miraculousness to them that others don't. So you can plan everything out and figure out every problem and solve the problem before you ever start, which, by the way, takes a long friggin time or solve most of the problems and start anyway. Or you can function from the enthusiasm. And what that is for me is is kind of like <clears throat> there's this universe. Oh, wait, there is a universe. We're in it. Oh, my God. That's awesome. That's see, I'm already there. There's this universe of of possibilities. Like and for me, I kind of see him like a little kid in a movie where there's there's they look up and there's all these like different lights and moving things and something transforms from like an iguana into a into a stardust trail, into a turtle, into a star, into it like that. And but some of those light up more than others energetically. And those are the ones where I go, hello, you know, and it's enthusing. Like, for example, when I first wrote the Being You book, it was that. It was, now's the time, okay? And it was enthusing. I had three different people try to write the book, and there was no enthusiasm to it. I found Katerina Valentin. What she sent me back enthused me, and I went, yes, we're going here. And so with, and I, you know, we're talking about these sorts of creations, but it, it actually exists within anything where that enthusiasm for all of us is a creative energy. And most people, you know, there's, there's all kinds of places where people are in jobs where they're not, and 
and yet they stay because of the money. Money does not create enthusiasm by itself, okay? Money is not a source of enthusiasm. Although for me, I get really enthusiastic and excited about money too, but it's not the money being the source. It's that this creation is leading to this thing also. So the enthusiasm for me, like, like you said, everybody that works with me knows if I'm not enthusiastic about it, we probably shouldn't do it because it's not going to get created. But <clears throat> what I tend to get enthusiastic about is those things that I know will have a great impact on people's lives. That's what enthuses me. So it tends to work pretty well. You know, I tend to, apparently I'm wired for this. You know what I mean? And so like in, in, I'm hoping that what I'm saying gives people enough information for themselves, but there's this way of interacting with something before it comes into creation that is, um, that is something where, where you're willing to receive a different possibility for something, for anything. Could be a new house, could be a new baby, could be a new car, could be a new job, could be uh, a creation, uh, a conversation you're about to have that's going to change your world, whatever. And if you let that in and don't diminish it, what happens is it, as it interacts with you, if you're willing to be the person that will take it from energy into form, then it will inform you of what it requires to become what it desires. And so everything has consciousness. So for example, an ESB class, an SOP class, this podcast, um, a Being You class, as just examples. So they all have consciousness. And if you let that in and just don't resist it, and also look for that tickle of enthusiasm that it gives you, and then go, okay, whatever thing you are, I don't even know what you are yet, but um, let me know when you know what I need to do to get you into the world and function from there. And I, I do realize how, how bizarre that can sound to people, but it's how I create. It's one of the ways in which I create. Well, it's, it's not bizarre at all, actually. And there's, there's a lot of clarity there. So thank you. There's, um, I've watched people like get to the doorstep of the thing they've been asking for and then turn down and, and I'm, I'm not say people, I mean myself too, um, turn down the enthusiasm somewhere from the point of view of like, um, well, if it doesn't happen, it might not happen. Like if it doesn't happen, don't show that you're excited because then you will be less disappointed when it doesn't happen. And, um, I've facilitated a few people around this lately and I just have seen, you know, in facilitation, you get to know what you know about things, but I've been seeing so much where that turn down is actually the disconnect from the thing. Like if you were to be the enthusiasm for the receiving of what's about to happen or what you're aware could happen, it actually engages the molecules for that thing to take form. But yes. where some of, so many of us are like, no, 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 keep your game face on. <laughs> Don't yeah. show that you're really excited um, because of whatever that let down or that lie of let down or whatever that well, is. If you, we're avoiding. if you look at it with most of our parents, if you were really excited about something, well, I know with our parents, if you're really excited about something and you didn't prove your need of it and you didn't prove that you were somehow like pathetic and think, you know, but, and, but I'm pathetic, but it'd be nice to have this thing, you know, daddy, you know, if, if, we were just enthusiastic about it, they would find a way to not let us have it. So you develop this strategy to pretend that you have a problem that this can help solve. And then your parent looks like the hero for solving your problem. Whereas if you were just really enthusiastic about it, a lot of parents would find a way to put it off or not let you have it. So they could somehow do something. I don't know what the hell they were doing, just being them. But so there's that, but there's also, see, for me, and this is a missing element that I don't think a lot of people get, for me, interacting with the energy of this thing is already enthusing. Show up, don't show up. I don't care. I've gotten the gift of being in communion with you thing, whatever you are. So we have the idea that somehow it's the actualization of it that is actually the only gift. And that's when we can acknowledge and that's when we can have it. No, acknowledge it now. 
You've just interacted with it, even though it doesn't exist in physical form yet. But you've interacted with it as the being that you are, which is an energetic being, which has just now had this experience of this whole new consciousness of the universe, this part of consciousness that didn't really exist before you were willing to receive it. And you just got that. You just, you just, you just got all that. And it's beautiful. And now whatever comes from here comes from here. It may actualize, it may not. You may start and realize it's not the thing for now, because that's another thing we do is we get future awarenesses and we don't ask, is now the time to start you? So many things, so many things to talk about. But the gift of that interaction with that is the enthusiasm is already there. And then as you continue to interact with it and it shows you other parts of what's possible, that enthusiasm grows. And as I'm saying this, I'm having this just beautiful, wonderful sense of that enthusiasm being very similar to the enthusiasm I started having every week that would grow as I would get my bars run and use one access tool a week to add to my toolbox. It's like that. And wow. <laughs> so I'm really glad we're doing this podcast because I haven't talked about this, these energetics in this way before. And I think when people listen, <clears throat> even if you don't think you get what we're talking about, listen a few times because the energetics of it is there. Yeah. That your being knows. And that your being can use to create and that your being can actually use to create something different as your future. Yeah. Well, you just showed me where like being the enthusiasm, like, you know, and you say happiness is just a choice and being the enthusiasm for the thing rather than waiting for the thing to create the enthusiasm for you or the actualization of the thing yeah. to create the enthusiasm that you think you need to have because the thing is finally here. But when you're being it in the interaction, um, pre, um, I want to say pre-birth, but that might not be what I mean yeah. <laughs> prior to <laughs> it taking shape or any form, um, that that's different. And I haven't heard you say that in that way before. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the last thing I want to, I'd like to kind of explore with you is, is you have this awesome class coming up this weekend. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, you have two awesome classes. You have the global access bars uh, class, and then you also have everything is possible. Um, and if, if you're listening to this and you've already taken a bars class, it's actually half off for you. Um, and you have a very reasonable cost, uh, taster or well, you don't really do tasters, but we're going to, no, call I don't, you don't do tasters. Mm. You, you, you make think people think they're going to get a taster, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't really do taster. <laughs> that's the kind of taster you get when you put your mouth up to an open fire hydrant taster. Exactly. <laughs> like when you bring your straw to the tsunami, <laughs> like, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but do, do you want to share a little bit about your enthusiasm for, uh, this weekend? Oh, so much. I am truly enthused. And that is one of the ways this bars class came about. And, um, really it's like, and I'm so, I'm so grateful. Thank you for asking me to, to have this conversation at this time specifically, because that man being, being reminded again of that enthusiasm that that amazing enthusiasm and how it kept increasing in my life week after week after week and how glorious it was to be alive and and is and is even more now you know but it's just like that's what from day one when I became a facilitator that is what everything I've always wanted to bring to people and so I know bars is the start and, you know, I do my um, ESB thing while doing everything that I do. So it's, I am so looking forward to having a lot of people around the world know that possibilities exist, to know this space of the possibility for enthusiasm whether they have, you know, whether they're like, I can choose it all now or not. I know that they will never, ever, ever 
be able to totally avoid or negate it. And that for me is, is such a gift because I see beautiful people who have so many choices available to them that they can't even see because of what they've been required to cut off as they've been going through this lifetime. And so there's that with the bars class and also with the bars. I mean, after the bars class, you can run bars. I mean, seriously, like you can do this for people. And not only can you do this for people, but you can actually charge to do it for people. Hello, business in a one day box. Are you kidding me? And um, and also then the, the next day we have Global Bars Day, which is this beautiful celebration. I can't tell you. I remember I was walking into your, I was actually, um, you were doing my hair at your studio. The one time or one of the times of two, I think that I came to your studio and, and got my hair cut by you when you had the studio in LA. And I was lying there and, and my head was in the bowl, you know, and you're washing and doing the best head massage ever, by the way, just got to say, you should charge for just that, just saying. Um, and all these people are walking in for a bars trade and they're bringing their tables in and they're just having casual conversation. Nobody knows I'm there, which was awesome because they would just be them, which I was so grateful for. And it hit me all <laughs> All these people around the world have this tool as theirs and are using it as theirs and are, are getting together to do it with other people because they want to, because of the contribution it is to them. And I'm like, holy shit, I've contributed to this, to these beautiful people having this as theirs. And man, you when you get it, nobody can take it away. And so that for me is um that for me is part of what what the beauty of the bars class is for me and um so as i was saying the global bars day we're having a celebration come get your bars run for free in all kinds of places around the world and then i'll be doing a class um an intro tsunami intro to tsunamis um uh, where it's called everything is possible how do i get there and it is going to be a lot of the exact energy and enthusiasm we've been talking about because I can think of no greater gift to invite people to, but also to acknowledge is present for them also. And to begin dynamically, hopefully to awaken their willingness to be that exuberance again, like they probably had it some other time before they cut it off and to reawaken it as much as possible. Well, I'm so excited to be there and um, we will put the, the link in the show notes so that anybody listening, and if you're listening to this in the far off future, I'm sure that the class was amazing and you can purchase it on Dean Shop. I, I know, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so much for evergreen. <laughs> <laughs> um. Dane, so I ask everybody on the podcast the same question at the end. I've asked you this before, and I know it's probably your answer is probably more than likely going to be different this time. Um, we call the podcast The Power of Being You. If you were to share what the power of being you is to you, what would you say? An unbridled, infinitely joyous enthusiasm for being alive in which judgment of self and others, unkindness to self and others, cease to be able to even exist. I'll take it. All right, <laughs> let's do you. it then. I'm asking for it. I don't know about you, but I'm asking. I'll join you in the ask. Thank you so much. <laughs> I just heard at, join you. <laughs> I said, ask everybody. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so glad I got to hear what you heard. <laughs> I didn't even go there. It's like, uh, all right. All right. 
All right. I adore you. <laughs> I adore you too. Thank you. Uh, Thank bye you everyone. all for listening. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>